and many thanks to all of you. Uh, of course, uh, as a Coastal and Marine Process uh, Commission, we are always very happy of uh, the activity of the project and the focus group, even if we are still in this um, weird situation. Uh, and uh, so these talks are uh, as uh, what we have done in the previous activity. They are always very interesting. And so I'm proud to be here to introduce this first uh, talk of the uh, 2022 and um, of uh, Professor Ectimius Karimbaris, uh, that is currently a full professor of coastal and fluvial geomorphology at the Department of Geography of the Aerocopio University of Athens. He was head of the department for the period of 2017 and 2020, and uh, uh, he was the director of the Master of Science department, departmental course for the period 2016-2018. Since the 2018, he is the president of the Atlantic Committee for Geomorphology and Environment uh, of the Geological Society of Greece. He's also a member of the working group of uh, tectonic uh, geomorphology of the IAG, IAG uh, International Association of Geomorphologists. And uh, for uh, those who concern the, um, the research activity, he carries out pure and applied research uh, activities uh, in the field of geomorphology with a special attention to uh, the coastal and fluvial geomorphology the morphotectonic in Greece, it's a paradise for this, uh, the geomorphological mapping and natural hazard. Uh, the results of this study uh, have been presented in uh, more than 70 national and international conferences and workshop. And uh, on these topics, he published uh, uh, more than uh, 150 papers published in uh, peer reviewed journals, book chapters and conference proceedings. And uh, the today uh, presentation uh, is um, uh, focused on this uh, uh, kind of uh, um, topic, and in particular, the title is Marine Terraces as Indicators of Late Quaternary Tectonic Activity, example from Greece. So I leave uh, the floor to uh, Eptinius, and I thank you again, uh, the Neptune community, for this series of uh, conference. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Vaki, for the introduction. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the members of the Neptune team for uh, inviting me to give this talk, and especially Claudia and Gaia for uh, this invitation. It is a great honor to me since it is the first of a series of uh, uh, very interesting scientific talks that will be given by pre prestigious uh, colleagues. So I'm really happy about this, and I feel honored. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now I, I, I hope you will enjoy my presentation. Uh, uh, today I will talk about marine terraces uh, and their role as indicators of late quaternary tectonic activity. And I will present two examples from Greece. Uh, here is a brief... Oh, I can't do it. Why? I can't change the, the slide. Ah, okay. Can you see it? Yes, it's working perfectly. Okay. Okay, okay. Here, here is a brief outline of my presentation. The first part of the presentation uh, is introductory, so I will say a few words about marine terraces in general, uh, the way they are formed, uh, their morphological characteristics and uh, their role as paleoshoreline indicators. Then I will go on with the uh, um, tectonic setting of Greece since the examples I will present are from this area. And then I will present uh, two cases of late quaternary tectonic uplift rate estimations inferred from marine terraces. The first example is from the southeastern part of the Peloponnese at the broader area of Neapolis, not the Italian Neapolis, the Greek Neapolis. <laughs> uh, and the second example is from the southeastern part of Crete Island, uh, where I will show you how we use marine terraces not only to estimate the regional component of tectonic uplift, but uh, also the activity of the normal fault of Via Rapetra uh, for at least for the last 400,000 years. Uh, if we would like to give a definition for marine terraces, we would say that they are abandoned paleoplatforms of marine origin that form that the coast has relatively flat and generally smooth surfaces, bounded by sea cliffs, both landward and seaward. 
In this figure, we can see the morphological characteristics of, uh, of the marine terraces. Uh, there is a sequence of marine terraces both on land and uh, in the figure and uh, um, underwater. And we have to say that these landforms are thought to form during periods of relative sea level stability. For example, when the rates of rock uplift and the static sea level change balance each other and are abandoned following sea level still stands, high stands or low stands. I have to say that the marine terraces that are preserved on land correspond to interglacial uh, uh, stages uh, of sea level uh, high stand, uh, while the marine terraces that correspond to the glacial periods of the late quaternary period uh, today are submerged. Uh, let's, uh, let's see now the morphological, the main morphological characteristics of a marine terrace. Uh, here we can see in this photo, which is from the southeastern part of the Peloponnese, it is the, the area where, uh, uh, where the first case uh, I will present later is. Uh, and we can say that uh, these landforms uh, typically consist of two distinct surfaces, uh, a gently dipping wave cut paleo platform and an inland bounding paleo cliff. In this photo, you can see this uh, relatively flat wave cut platform. Uh, here it is cut into limestone. And uh, it is bounded inland by this uh, steep uh, surface, which corresponds to the Paleo Cliff at the time of its formation. Um, of course, a uh, very significant morphological characteristic of the marine terraces is, is the junction between these two um, uh, surfaces, which is called uh, the Paleo Shoreline Angle or uh, the Inner Edge. And it is very important since it is a geomorphic marker that closely approximates the position of the local sea level at the time of terrace formation typically during sea level high stands. Uh, in this photo, you can see that uh, uh, many times uh, this, uh, this uh, inner edge uh, is marked by uh, an abandoned wave cut platform, uh, like in this uh, photo, which is from the same, uh, from the same area. Uh, this figure shows the uh, relationship of sea level rise and fall to the formation of a series of marine terraces uh, on a rising coast. We can see here the formation of the present day shore platform uh, uh, by seabed erosion, and we can see um, similar paleo platforms uh, which are high at highly uh, at gradually higher uh, elevations and that formed with exactly the same process, seabed erosion, uh, during the uh, late quaternary sea level high stands, uh, which here are represented by this um, global static sea level curve for, for the last 450. A thousand years. So we can say that marine terraces, a series of marine terraces, a flight of marine terraces, usually when we say a flight of marine terraces, we mean a sequence of marine terraces with a step like morphology uh, in a coastal region is the result of the interaction between long term tectonic uplift and quaternary uh, sea level fluctuations. So we, we can say that marine terraces are landforms that record the history of tectonic and static sea level changes over the quaternary. Uh, these landforms are important paleo-horizontal indicators that permit the assessment of special variations in vertical motions of the crust, and uh, they can uh, be useful for measuring rates and patterns of tectonic uplift, uplift in uh, coastal areas, as I will show you with uh, the two examples. Here, this photo is from the area of Peloponnese. Uh, these are bedrock uh, marine terraces, a series of uh, five bedroom marine terraces uh, that have given to the landscape this step-like morphology. It is from the, from the area of Mani. Uh, of course, to use marine terraces uh, in order to quantify the vertical movements uh, of a coastal area, we need to date them. Uh, we need to know their age. I mean, in which MIS sea level high stand they correspond to. Um, dating many terraces is not an easy task. It is a difficult uh, uh, issue. Uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, quite a lot of uh, techniques and methods developed uh, for constraining the age of the marine terrace. And here are some of them. For the very recent ones, the most commonly used uh, dating methodology is uh, carbon 14, but only for very recent marine terraces. Um, I have to say that the least ambiguous uh, absolute dating method uh, for marine terraces uh, is uh, uranium thorium disequilibrium. However, in cases of detrital contamination or low uranium concentration, uh, the results are not accurate. Um, another uh, commonly used methodology uh, is optical stimulated luminescence. 
um, and it is uh, uh, quite uh, important that this can be applied when um, uh, organic matter is uh, absent. Um, and it is commonly used uh, to date uh, marine terrace deposits. Uh, and I have to say that uh, another method, dating method, that uh, has great potential for constraining the age of uh, particularly uh, bedrock marine terraces is surface exposure dating, which is based on the analysis of in situ produced cosmogenic nuclides uh, such as beryllium, neon, uh, aluminium and chloride. Uh, of course, there are uh, many other uh, less precise dating methods which are not uh, used uh, frequently. Uh, I have to say that the study of marine terraces had started by the 1970s in several places and has seen expanded to almost all the uplifting coastal regions of the world. Uh, this was achieved uh, due to the establishment of the Pleistocene sea level fluctuation theory and uh, due to the development of the dating techniques I uh, presented to you at the previous uh, slide. Here are three photos from uh, tectonically uplifting uh, areas. The first is an uh, aerial view of an impressive uh, uplifted marine terrace from California and the uh, USA. Uh, the middle uh, photo is from the tectonically active uh, Taranaki region in uh, New Zealand. And the last photo is from the southern coast of Crete where we can see a series of uh, five bedrock marine terraces that have given to the landscape this step-like uh, morphology. Uh, let's move now to the tectonic setting of Greece, since, as I said, the examples I will present are from this area. Uh, in this simplified uh, uh, map uh, that presents the tectonic status in Greece, we can see here the, the thick carved uh, black line, which uh, represents the Hellenic subduction zone where the African plate uh, is sub subsiding beneath the Eurasian plate at a, mid at, the, at a mean rate of 36 millimeters per year, as we can see in this uh, red thick arrow. Uh, in this simplified map, the red uh, arrows indicate the plate movement. The orange colored uh, arrows indicate areas of compression and extension. And the, uh, uh, the red colored uh, circles correspond to the Aegean, uh, to the Aegean volcanic arc. Uh, so, uh, I have to say uh, here that uh, recent uh, GPS uh, measurements indicate that the rate of crustal movement of the Aegean uh, plate uh, in respect to Africa uh, is up to 40 millimeters per year, especially offshore the Peloponnese and the south of Crete, where the two examples I will present um, uh, are. Uh, I have also to say that uh, this uh, uh, subduction, the Hellenic subduction zone, is offset here at the area of the Ionian Sea by a strike slip uh, Kefalonia fault, which is very active. And of course, another structure that affects the, the area is the uh, uh, right lateral strike slip uh, fault of North Anatolia. You can see here that it enters the northern. Um, a GNC, and uh, in fact, this structure is the northern boundary of the microplate of the Aegean. Um, I have, I, I, as we as we saw briefly in one minute, <laughs> uh, the tectonic status uh, in Greece shows that it is one of the most tectonically active area in the world. Uh, and this uh, tectonic status favors uh, the formation and preservation of marine terraces in many, many coastal places uh, along the forearc of the Hellenic subduction zone. Uh, 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 spectacular uh, marine terraces, ser series of marine terraces, there are in many places, uh, such as uh, Kefalonia Island, especially in the southern and the western part of this, uh, of this uh, island of the Ionian Sea. Uh, many places uh, in the Peloponnese, such as Western Messinia, Messinian Mani, the area of Laconia, and the islands of Kithira and the Kithira, the southern, western, and eastern coast of uh, Crete Island, uh, Carpathos, Rhodos. And uh, to these places, we have to add also the spectacular uh, sequence of up to 10 uplifted marine terraces that have developed at the southern part of the, at the 